Hey everybody, welcome to class again. I'm excited that we're having another class today. And this class is at a completely new time for us. So I think this will be interesting to see who shows up to this class. Um, I, I'm sure there'll be a few people here who have been to class before, but I imagine there will also be some people who have never been to one of my classes before because it is at a very different time. So we'll see who shows up today. But in order for us to get started, okay, we're going to start the way we always start. If you haven't been to this class before, that's okay. Let me explain. We always start with introductions, okay? And that's so I know who's here in class. When I have class with you guys, I like to use your names so I can talk to you specifically and tell you what corrections I'm giving to you. So if you can help me out by introducing yourself in the comments, okay? I'm going to post something so that you guys know what I'd like you to tell me, but I'm also going to say it. So first of all, hey, Nasir, I see you. So first of all, what is your name? Second of all, what country are you from? And third, the question for today is, where are you right now? Where are you right now? So I'm going to type that into the comments for you guys. And you guys can go ahead and post your introductions. And I'll introduce myself first. So my name is Patricia. Most of you already knew that. I'm from the United States. Some of you might not have known that. And where am I right now? You guys definitely don't know that. So right now, I'm in my house, and this is actually a bedroom in my house. It's not the bedroom where I usually sleep. It's for guests or visitors, but this is my bedroom. This is not real. <laughs> Some people actually think that I'm outside, but no, I'm in a bedroom. So now I'd love for you guys to tell me who you are, where you're from, and where are you right now? So who else is here? Luis, I see someone named Luis, hello. And Viswanathan, I hope I said that correctly. Hello, who else is here? Um, yes, okay, so I see you guys are introducing yourselves. That's very helpful. So now, you guys can continue to introduce yourselves in the comments. And while you do that, I'm gonna give a couple of really quick announcements and then we're gonna get started with class, okay? First announcement is free classes happen all the time. You guys who use my Facebook page on a regular basis probably notice that I'm doing more free classes. So if you're interested in these free classes, if you like these free classes, first of all, please give this video a thumbs up. That's really helpful. It helps other students to find these classes. But second, if you want to find out about all the other free classes that I'm doing, make sure you like the Facebook page and make sure you check events. Events is where I post all of the free classes. So if you need more information about that, you can go to events. And if you like this page, you'll get a message from Facebook every time I post a new free class, okay? Second announcement is my English club. If you need more help with your English, I have a club and I use that club to share lots of information that I have with students. So if you would like to join my English club, all you have to do is go to my website, ivyleagueenglish.com. All of these links are posted in my first comment, okay? So if you are looking for any of these links, just look for my first comment. It should be right at the top. It should be the very first comment because I pinned it there. The last announcement that I have is, in addition to free classes, I also have small group classes, ooh, small group classes and private classes. So I know some students are actually interested in that. If you want more information about that, you should go to my website. And I posted a link for that as well. So you guys can just go to my 
comment, and you can use any of those links to find the information that you're looking for. All right? Also, like I said, if you like having free classes, please give this video a thumbs up or a heart, whatever you feel like. Okay, so now let's get started with class. Oh, wait, let me see who else is here. Um, Johnny, Johnny, hello. I think you might be new. I'm not sure if I recognize that name. And let's see, Lizeth, Lizeth, hello, and Saul. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to class. All right, so, and thank you for the thumbs up also. Okay, so now we're going to get started, and we're going to start with something nice and easy. Don't get nervous, okay? We're going to start with a little game. So we've done a few different games in this class in the past. We've done games that have to do with synonyms. We've done games that have to do with antonyms. We've done games that have to do with prefixes and suffixes. Today's game has to do with rhyming. Rhyming, okay? So I know that you guys can't talk to me, but we can still work on rhyming. So rhyming, just so everybody understands, because I'm not sure if everyone knows what that word means, rhyming is when two words end with the same sound, all right? And I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, examples. Abner, hello. <laughs> all right, so examples of rhyming. Green and clean, okay? They end with the same een sound. Green, clean. Also, toast and most. They end with the same oast sound. Toast, most. So, the word that I have for you guys today is bone. The word is bone. And I would like you guys to type in any word that you can think of that rhymes with bone, okay? So get your fingers ready, type fast. What is a word that means the same, not that means the same thing. What is a word that rhymes with bone? What is a word that rhymes with bone? Okay, and I'll give you guys a little bit of time because this is the first time we've ever tried a rhyming game. So take your time if you need to, think about it a little bit, but when you think of a word, type it in so that I can see it. What is a word that rhymes with bone? Okay, and Bruna from Brazil, hello. We have a nice full class today. All right, guys, words that rhyme with bone. Let's see what you guys come up with. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Bruna, very good. Stone rhymes with bone. Nasir, phone also rhymes. And tone, very good. Those all rhyme with bone. Saul, town, that has a different sound at the end. Bone and town they don't rhyme, but that was a good try, Saul. Thanks for trying. All right, Abner, phone, yes, phone, and bone was the original word, but phone absolutely rhymes. Johnny, zone, very good. Zone rhymes with bone. And let's see, what else do we have? Abner, come. That has a different sound at the end. Bone and come. Those don't rhyme, but that was a good try, Abner. Thanks for trying. All right, if you guys can think of a couple more, go ahead and type them in. Nasir, John, okay, bone and John. Those are not the same sound at the end. Bone, John. Those are a little different, so they don't rhyme. All right, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds, and then game's over. So let's see if anyone has any last suggestions. Words that rhyme with bone. Oh, Babar Khan, hello, how are you? All right, so it looks like you guys are stuck. I'm gonna give you three more words that nobody mentioned. How about blown? Blown, as in the wind had, been, had blown all day. The wind had blown 
all day. Blown. Also, drone. Drone. So drone is um, it's that thing that people fly in the air, those small things that you control with a controller. And sometimes people put cameras on them and they can fly around and spy on people. That's a drone. Abner, shown. Very good. Shown. So shown is the past tense of shine. Shown also rhymes with bone. Good job, guys. All right. I just wanted to make sure you guys were paying attention. Now, let's start with something a little more challenging, okay? So, for today, usually what we do with this class is we go over some of the lessons that were posted on the Facebook page this week. Now, today, I'm going to break the rules, okay? I actually want to go over something that was posted on the Facebook page last week. And the reason why I want to go over it is because I know a lot of students are confused about this topic. So here's what we're going to talk about. Can, could, and could have. Okay? And I'll type them in so you can see the words. Can, could, and could have. Now, these three words or phrases, could have is a phrase, are really tricky for some students. They're not sure when to use which one, if it's the past tense, if it's the future or the present, and when do you use which one. So I thought we should talk about it a little bit today to make sure that everyone is really clear on how to use can, could, and could have, okay? Now, I will warn you, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit confusing, only because native speakers sometimes break the rules. But I'm going to explain it very clearly so that you guys really feel a little more comfortable with it. All right? So the first thing we need to talk about, and this is how I realized why students were so confused about, about can, could, and could have. The first thing we need to talk about is the word can. Okay, because the word can has two very different meanings. And whether or the way you treat the word can depends on which meaning of the word you want to use. Okay, so the word can. Sometimes when you use the word can, it means that you are capable of doing something. You're able, you have the power to do it, okay? But sometimes we use the word can, and it means that something is possible, that there's a chance that it might happen. Now, those are two very different things. One is talking about what you're capable of, what you have the power to definitely do. And the other one is talking about something that may or may not happen. So those are very different, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want you guys to practice using the word can in the context of being capable or able or having the power to do something. So... Before I ask you guys to do it, I'm going to give you an example, okay? I could say something like, I can run a marathon. I can run a marathon, okay? Now, when I say that, what I mean is I am capable of running a marathon. I am able. I have the power. I know that I can do it. I can run a marathon. That's how you use the word can to mean capable or able. So I want you guys now to think about <laughs> Abner. Yes, could have plus the participle. Yes, that ha that's how we use could have. But the question is, when do you use could have? That's what we're going to get to. So the word can, meaning capable or having the power, I want you guys to write a sentence in the comments so that I can see it. 
And I want you to make it a sentence that's about something you have the power to do, something you're capable of doing. Like my example, I can run a marathon. I know that I can run a marathon. I have the power. Or I could say, I can, what else can I do? What else can I do? I can teach English. I can definitely do that. I have the power to do that. So I want to see some examples from you guys. How do you use the word can to mean capable or having the power? All right. So I can do wonders. I can do wonders. So the test is, are you 100% sure that you can do this? If you are, then you're using it to mean I have the power or I'm capable. So I can do wonders. Nasir, I'm sure that's true. All right. Very good. I can run this business all alone. Yes. Okay. So in that sentence, you're saying I'm able. I have the power to do it all alone. Ruben, oh, hello, Ruben. I didn't even see you come in. Ruben, I can cook very well. Excellent. Now you're talking about your abilities. Very good. I can learn English. Saul, very nice. I can learn English. I can understand you. Lizeth, I'm so glad that you can understand me. That's great. All right, let's see if there are any others. Those are all really good examples, guys. Okay. If there are any other examples, you can go ahead and put them in. But now I want to talk about the other meaning of the word can. So again, this definition is about what is possible, something that may or may not happen. Okay. So again, oh, Abner's got one. I can communicate my ideas in a different language. Isn't that awesome when you can do that? <laughs> Good job. All right. So now we're going to talk about possibility, using the word can to show possibility. So my example is for dinner, I can have fish. For dinner, I can have fish. It may or may not happen. For dinner, I can have fish. Or I can have chicken. Which one is going to happen? I don't know. So now I'm using the word can to mean possible. I can have fish or I can have chicken. Now, you guys, I want you to do the same. Just come up with one sentence. Use the word can, but this time not talking about ability, talking about possibility, something that may or may not happen. All right? So. I'll give you a little time to get your sentences going. You can type them in. Use can in a sentence to mean possible. Something may or may not happen. Felicia, hello, Felicia. How are you? Welcome to class. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to type in your sentences. Remember, you want to use the word can to mean possible. Okay, just give me one simple example. And you don't have to think too hard about it. Just make something up, okay? Can to mean possible. Let me come up with another good example for you guys. Um, oh, here's one. I can meet you for dinner tonight. I can meet you for dinner tonight. I can meet you for dinner tonight. Will I meet you for dinner? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not, but I can meet you for dinner tonight. I definitely have time. It's possible. I'm just not sure if it's going to happen. All right, so sentences. Ruben's got one. I can go to Canada, or maybe I can go to Italy on vacation. Very good, Ruben. Remember, we say on vacation. And I know you're typing on your phone, so maybe you just typed in by accident, but I just want to remind you, on vacation. All right, Abner, what do you have? We can have a wonderful day if we decide to, if we decide to, okay? So we can have a wonderful day if we decide to. It's possible to have a wonderful day. All you have to do is make the decision. All right, Lizeth has one. I can eat all day 
or <laughs> or sleep. <laughs> nice, very good, Lizeth. It's possible. I can eat all day or sleep. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Ramundo, I see you. I can see you very well. Now, that one, Ramundo, that one is about ability. That one is about ability. So when you say I can see you, that means I am able to see you. I can 100% definitely see you. That's the other meaning of the word can, okay? So this is what I want to make sure you guys are clear on. There are two, definition, two definitions of the word can. But thank you for typing that in, Ramundo. That's very helpful for us to see that so we can understand the difference. And Abner. Um, oh, I already saw Abner's. Okay, so those are all really great sentences. So now you guys are kind of starting to see the difference between the two. Now, let me explain why you need to know the difference between the two. When you take a sentence that has the word can in it, and you decide that you want to change it to the past or to the future, the way you change it is different depending on which definition of can you're talking about, okay? So let's first talk about capability, all right? That was the first one that we talked about. So if you have a sentence that's talking about capability, like, I can run a marathon. I can run a marathon. I am 100% sure that I am able to run a marathon. I can run a marathon. Now, if I want to take that sentence, I can run a marathon, and I want to put it in the, which one should we do first? Let's do the future first. If I want to put this sentence, and I'll type it in for you guys, okay? If I want to put that sentence in the future tense, how do I do that? How do I take that sentence and put it in the future tense? I want you guys to give it a try before I give you the answer, okay? So, I can run a marathon. How do you put that in the future tense? I'll give you guys a little bit of time. I know you have to think about it, and you also have to type it in, and then you gotta send it. So, I'll give you guys a little time. But remember, we're talking about capability, Poss not possibility, capability or power. I have the power to run a marathon. I am capable of running a marathon. How do I put that in the future? I'll give you guys five more seconds. I don't want to wait too long. I know some people are dying for the answer. All right, so if you want to take a sentence like this that's talking about capabilities and you want to change it to the future tense, what you want to say is, um, oh, Lizeth, I can buy a new dress. That's uh, using the definition of possibility. I think that's what you're doing, okay? So Lizeth, just let me know if you have a question about that one. But if you're talking about possibility, that sounds like a good one. So now, my sentence, oh, Luis, you have a suggestion, very good. Okay, I'm glad someone has a suggestion. So I can run a marathon. If I wanna put that in the future, what I wanna say is I will be able to run a marathon, okay? I will be able to run a marathon. So Luis, very good. You said, I'll be able to run a marathon. Excellent. That's exactly what you want to do. Ruben, I will can run a marathon. So yes, I understand that you're not sure. This is a really hard concept for a lot of students, okay? So don't feel bad, Ruben. So the way you want to change that to the future tense is, I will be able to run a marathon, okay? And that's pretty much the only way we put that into the future tense, okay? Now, let's take that same sentence, I can run a marathon, and now put it in the past tense. Put it in the past tense. How would I say that in the past tense? 
All right, I'll give you guys a few seconds because I know it takes a little time and I'm just gonna check if there are any comments that I missed, okay? If you put a comment in and I missed your comment, just let me know, type in a message and say, Patricia, I had a comment. Or you can put your comment in a second time, okay? Sometimes I, I miss a couple of comments because it's hard to see everything. So if I wanna take that sentence, I can run a marathon and put it in the past tense. What does that sentence look like? What should I say? So I see a couple of suggestions. Luis has one. Luis is ready to work today. Luis is fast. <laughs> All right. So if I want to take that sentence and put it in the past tense, there are actually two ways to say it. Okay. I can run a marathon is in the present. Now, if you want to talk about the past, you can say, I was able to run a marathon. I was able to run a marathon. That's one way to say it. So if you want to talk about yesterday, last year, or way back when you were a kid, I was able to run a marathon. Maybe now I can't, but I was able to. Okay. Now, the other way that you can say this in the past tense is I could, I could run a marathon. Now, here's the way that you'll hear that used a lot of the time. When I was a kid, I could run a marathon, but now <laughs> I can't, okay? So when you're talking about the past and you're talking about powers or capabilities, could, you can use. When I was a kid, I could run a marathon, okay? Um, so now we're going to talk about possibilities, not capabilities or powers, but possibilities, something that may or may not happen. So for this one, we'll talk about my sentence that I used. I said, I can have fish for dinner. I can have fish for dinner. And then I added on, I said, or I could have chicken. But for now, let's just focus on that first part. I can have fish for dinner. Now, I can have fish for dinner is talking about the present tense. I could have fish or I can have fish for dinner. Now, here's the first tricky thing that I'm going to tell you about this whole topic. And I actually just slipped and said it. Native speakers, when we talk about possibility in the present tense, sometimes we use can. Sometimes we use could to talk about the present. So I know already that's a little bit tricky. So if I'm talking about today, right now, I can have fish for dinner. Another way to say that is, I could have fish for dinner. Talking about now, today, native speakers will also say that. So, I can have fish for dinner. I could have fish for dinner. If we're talking about possibility, those two sentences mean the same thing. They mean the same thing. That is how native speakers really talk. Now, yes, you might have learned something different in a class that you took somewhere, but I'm teaching you how native speakers really speak. When we talk about the present, sometimes we use can and sometimes we use could when we talk about possibility. I could have fish for dinner tonight or I could have chicken. I can have fish for dinner tonight or I can have chicken. They mean the same thing, okay? so. I know some of you are probably surprised by that, but just try to try to let that try to let that uh, sink in. That's what I want to say. Try to let that sink into your brain. Okay, they both mean the same thing. Now the question is, what do we do when we want to talk about possibilities in the future? Possibilities in the future. So. 
Oh, Abner has a, has something. What do we have? I could have gone to the beach, but I decided to to go to the mountains instead. So that is a different tense, okay? We're going to get to that, Abner, but we're not there yet. So right now we're talking about I can have fish for dinner. I could have fish for dinner. Now, what if you want to take that sentence and put it in the future tense. What if I want to talk about tomorrow or next week's dinner? How do I phrase that sentence, okay? I want you guys to give it a try before I tell you the answer. I can have fish for dinner, or I could have fish for dinner. How do you take those sentences and put them in the future? How do you talk about tomorrow's dinner or next week's dinner? All right, I'll give you guys a few seconds and then we'll talk about the answer. All right, I'm also going to check for some comments. I don't want to miss anything. Let's see. Oh, Luis, teacher, what about I might have fish for dinner? Okay, so good question. I might have fish for dinner. That also means pretty much the same thing. So you're right. That is also pretty close there. Like can, could, might, when you're talking about possibilities, not capabilities, but possibilities. Those things are all very close and we use them to mean pretty much the same thing, okay? The only thing that I would say is when you hear the word might, I think that's the word that you used, was it? Um, yes, you used the word might. So the word might usually means that it's less likely to happen. So if it's likely, might happen, might not happen, you could use the word can or could. If there is a very, very slim chance of it happening, if it's really not likely, that's usually when you'll hear the word might used, okay? But you don't have to worry about those tiny differences because to be honest, like I said, a lot of native speakers use all of those words to mean the same thing. Okay, so yeah, you're right. That's all in the same category. Now, how do we say this in the future? I want to see some suggestions for that. And guys, don't worry if you're wrong, okay? There's no grades in this class. Nobody fails this class. This is just to help you guys learn. So try to put this sentence in the future, and then I'll help you guys out. So let's see, what do we have? You can use could to talk in to talk about future possibilities. Luis, you are correct. So you can use the word could to talk about the future. Absolutely. Abner, um, yes, Abner, yeah, maybe you under you misunderstood. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Ruben, I'm going to have fish for dinner all next week. Okay, so going to is different because going to means that it's definite. Going to is in the future, but there's no possibility there. That's definite, okay? So that's a different sentence. It means something different. Yes, it's in the future, but you're not talking about possibilities anymore because you're saying that it's going to happen. But that was a good guess, okay? Thank you for that. Let's see, what else do we have? Lizeth. I'll can have turkey for dinner. I will can have turkey for dinner. Good try. Good try. Now, the easiest way to do, well, actually, all of the ways to do this are easy. There are two ways to say it in the future. And Luis is on the right track. When we talk about possibilities in the future, we use the same exact words that we use to talk about the present. Now that also might be surprising to some of you. So if you're talking about possibilities, you can use can or could to talk about the present and it means the same thing. You can also use can or could to talk about the future and it means the same thing. So if I wanna talk about dinner next week, for dinner next week, I can have fish or chicken. For dinner next week, I could have fish or chicken. 
you use the same words. Now, when you talk about the future, I would probably say it's a little more common to use could instead of can, but I'm telling you, you will hear native speakers say both of those things, okay? So don't be surprised when you hear both. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is how do we take this sentence and put it in the past? How do we take this sentence and put it in the past? So the sentence is the same. I can have fish for dinner. If I wanna talk about the past, maybe yesterday's dinner or last week's dinner, how would I say that, okay? I want you guys to type in a sentence Give it a try, even if you're not sure, even if you're positive that it's wrong, just give it a try. Like I said, there is no grades in this class, okay? So this is just to help you guys learn. How do we put that sentence in the past? Luis, uh, is this a question? Going to is when you have a plan, okay. Yeah, so you're right. Going to is used to talk about the future. And a lot of times it's when you have a plan, but generally going to is future tense and it's something that's definite, okay? So when you say going to, there's really no question about whether or not it's gonna happen. As far as you know, it's definitely going to happen. Tomorrow, I am going to the gym. It's definitely going to happen because I'm planning to do it. So you're right, Lewis. Now, Abner, let's see your comment. We could have a better soccer game tonight if we play all together. So that's could, but I'm talk we're talking about something a little bit different, okay? So remember, we're talking about my sentence, I can have fish for dinner. How do you put that in the past tense, okay? So, I think it's could in the past too. Ruben, okay, so thanks. You made a guess. I appreciate that. I think it's could in the past. So this is the one that's a little bit different, all right? So when you talk about possibilities in the past, this is the time when you use could have, could have, okay? So today, I can have fish for dinner. Or today, I could have fish for dinner. Yesterday, I could have had fish for dinner. I could have had fish for dinner yesterday, okay? So could have is used when you're talking about possibilities in the past. That's when you use could have, all right? So I wanted to make sure that that was really clear for you guys because I know it's confusing. I know people here that were watching were confused about it. I know people who saw that lesson that I posted last week were confused about it. So listen, keep it very simple in your head. Your first question to yourself should be, am I talking about possibilities or am I talking about capabilities, okay? If you're talking about capabilities in the present, can. That's the word that we use. In the future, will be able to. That's how we talk about powers or abilities in the future. And in the past, you can say was able to or you can say could. Now, if you're talking about possibilities, something that may or may not happen, in the present, you can use can or could. In the future, you can use can or could. And in the past, you have to use could have, could have. All right, guys? So I know that was a lot of information, but I really wanna make sure that you guys understand all the different ways to talk about possibilities and capabilities so that you guys can get more comfortable with it. So now, before we move on, all right, I could have fish for dinner yesterday. So 
Who is that? Lizzie. You're close. You're close. So what you want to say is, I could have had fish for dinner. Because remember, my sentence was, I can have fish for dinner. So now in the past, I need to take the word can and change that to could have. But then the other word that was already there, have dinner, I need to change that to the past, had dinner. So my final sentence, if I'm talking about yesterday's dinner, I could have had fish for dinner last night. I could have had fish for dinner last night. Okay, so that's the sentence that you'll end up with if you're talking about possibilities in the past. So, Luis, I could have fish for dinner, but I ate meat. So, Luis, again, I could have had is what you want to say. I could have had. And Abner, you actually mentioned this way at the beginning of class. After we use could have, that's when you need to use the participle. So that's why the word have changes to had, right? It's not really the past tense of have. It's actually the participle of have. So your final sentence is, I could have had fish for dinner last night. Okay, so Luis, I hope that makes sense to you. Cesar, let me see your comment. Um, by the, oh, Cesar, you are late. <laughs> That's okay, Cesar. It's all right if you're late, because remember, you can watch the recording. You haven't missed anything. Lizeth, I could have had dinner, I could have had fish for dinner last night. Lizeth, that's perfect. If you're talking about possibility in the past, that's exactly what you want to say. All right, Ruben, you get it now. Awesome. All right, I'm glad that that makes a little more sense to you. Now, if you still have questions, that's okay. We have a few more minutes right now. So I'm going to open up class to any questions that you guys would like to ask right now. Any questions that you have about English, you can go ahead and type those into the comments and I'll be happy to answer your question if it's something that I can answer quickly. All right, Omar, hello, how are you? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while, Omar. All right, so any questions that you guys have about English, I would love to know, okay? And Luis, you all caught up, good, it makes sense now. If you still have questions about can, could, or could have, you can go ahead and type those in. If you have other questions about English, you can go ahead and type those in as well, all right? So you guys go ahead and type in any questions that you have. While you do that, I'm gonna give a couple more announcements, okay? Because I know there are some people that are here now that were not here at the beginning and you probably missed the announcements. So three very quick announcements. Number one, these free classes happen all the time. Some of you might have noticed that I'm doing more free classes than I used to. So if you want more information about the free classes, where should you go? Go to events. On this Facebook page, if you go to events, you'll see all of the information about our free classes. Now, if you like the Facebook page, you'll get a message from Facebook anytime I post a new class. So if you want to get those messages that remind you about classes, make sure you like the Facebook page, okay? Also, speaking of likes, if you enjoyed this class or if you found it helpful, please give this class a thumbs up. You can give a thumbs up to this video. That's really helpful. It helps other students to find this class. The next announcement is my English club. If you need more help with your English, I have a club that I use to help students learn English. And I send them all of the different materials that I have, YouTube videos, Facebook lessons, blog articles. I'm starting a podcast soon. So if you would like to get 
all of this information that I have in one nice, convenient email. You should join my club. All you have to do is go to my website and you can join the club from there, okay? And the last announcement that I'm going to make is that there are small group classes and private group, private classes. Oh, it's really late. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day for me, guys. I'm sorry. So I teach small group classes and I teach private classes as well as these free classes. And I know some students are looking for that. So if you'd like more information, you can definitely go to my website. Now, I posted all of these links at the beginning of class, but I posted them again just to make it easier for you guys to find it. So I just posted all of that information. It has all of the links. If you're looking for different information about the free classes, private classes, my English club, it's all in that one post that I just put in the comments, all right? So now I'm gonna take a look and see if we have any English questions because I'd love to help you guys out with those. Let's see. And oh, did a, did a bunch of people just show up? <laughs> Let's see, who's here now? Valder, Valder? Valder, I hope I said your name correctly. Hello, that seems like a new name. I don't think you've been to one of my classes before. Welcome. Natalia, hello, how are you? Omar, you're doing well, I'm glad to hear it. Cesar, could and would, oh, would, hmm. So would is also talking about possibility, but would is a little bit different. Now, I'll be honest with you, we don't have enough time to talk about all of the ways to use would. But here's what I can do. The way we talked about could and can today, we can have another class where we talk about would and all the different ways to use it. Would and will generally go together. So we can have another class where we talk about that. Cesar, that's actually probably a good idea. So look out for that. When we have free classes, I usually post a little description. You'll probably see one soon that says we're going to talk about will and would, okay? So thank you for that suggestion. Let's see, any other comments here? Luis, yes, teacher, I have a question, but it's not about the topic. It's about how can I improve my pronunciation? It's a big issue. Okay, so pronunciation, yeah, it can be tough. Thank you for the thumbs up and the hearts, guys. I appreciate it. Pronunciation can be really tough. When I have private classes and small group classes, I spend a good amount of time with my students on pronunciation because it's really hard to work on your pronunciation if you don't have native English speakers around you to give you the feedback that you need to tell you, yes, that sounds right, or no, that doesn't sound right. Try it again, try it like this. Put your tongue here. So there are different things that you can practice. Like I always recommend to my students when you read in English, sometimes read out loud. Just practice saying English words. The more you practice saying them, the easier it is to say them without stumbling. And the more smoothly you can say them. So practice reading out loud. That's one good idea. Now, of course, Anytime you can talk to native speakers, that's a great opportunity. And if there are people that are friendly with you, people that you're friends with, you can tell them, I wanna work on my pronunciation. If I say something wrong, correct me. Because a lot of native speakers, if they're not your teacher or if you don't ask them to correct you, they're not gonna correct you because that can be considered a rude thing to do and they don't wanna be rude. But if you say to them, it's okay to correct me, then you'll get a little more help from them. Now, the other thing that I would suggest is if you watch a lot of TV or movies with native speakers in them, pay attention to how they talk. And when you hear a sentence, pause it and then try to repeat it. Try to say it the way they said it. And you can even try that a couple of times because sometimes the first time you say it, is not really that close. But if you try a couple of times, your pronunciation will get a little bit closer. So those things can definitely help you with pronunciation. Now again, it will be hard if you don't have someone around you who can tell you, yes, that sounds perfect, or no, that sounds close, but it's not exactly right. It'll still be a little bit hard. So again, 
These free classes are a great way for you guys to get a little extra help. Tomorrow's free class is a speaking practice class. So I can actually help people with their pronunciation in that class. If you're interested in that, come to that class. Now, the other thing is my small group classes and my private classes, of course, we work a lot on pronunciation there. So if you're interested in those classes, you'll definitely get help with your pronunciation. All right. So I appreciate what you're saying, Luis. And it's not an easy thing to fix, but there are things you can do on your own. And then, of course, sometimes you have to look for help, maybe from a teacher or from a native English speaker. Okay. And Ruben, let's see. To me, the most difficult thing in English is idioms and phrasal verbs. So yes, that's a common, a common, uh, I don't want to say complaint, but it's a common thing that students say. Now, that's actually why a lot of the material that I put on my Facebook page, um, a lot of it has to do with idioms and phrasal verbs, because I know that those are some of the hardest things for English students to get really good at. So I spend a lot of time making material for the Facebook page that will introduce you to new expressions, new phrasal verbs, or just practicing the phrasal verbs. Also, new slang. Now, slang is also something that can be really confusing if you're not familiar with it. So you don't have to use slang when you talk just like you don't have to use expressions when you talk. But if you wanna be able to understand other people, especially native speakers who use slang and use these expressions, then you have to study them so that you understand them. All right, so I understand. And if you want more help with that, keep coming back to my Facebook page because we spend a lot of time working on that. All right, Omar, it's 8.15 where you are. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in El Salvador. Awesome, Omar. Natalia, how can I improve my spoken English? Please give me some advice. All right. So the, the most honest advice that I can give you, Natalia, is you need more practice. A lot of English students practice reading all the time because it's easy to practice reading. All you have to do is find a book. A lot of English students will practice writing. A lot of them practiced writing in school when they first started learning English. So they're actually pretty good at it. They've done it for a long time. And there are a lot of English students who are even really comfortable with listening because they spend a lot of time listening to TV shows and movies and podcasts and things like that. But speaking is that one thing that is really hard for students to practice because if you don't know other people who can speak English, who are you going to practice with? Or if the only people that you know are students and they're not native speakers, well, yeah, you can practice, but they can't give you the same feedback, the same help that a native speaker would give you. Okay? So practicing speaking, you got to just speak more. S talking to yourself is actually not a bad idea. I do that when I'm practicing other languages. When I'm in the house and nobody's around to laugh at me because I'm talking to myself, I'll actually talk to myself in Spanish and I'll just describe the things that I'm doing or the things that I'm looking at in a book or on TV. So those are great ways to practice speaking English. You'll have to practice making sentences. You'll have to think about what word comes first and then what should I say? What comes after that? And then how should I end it? That's good practice to talk to yourself. But having conversations, that requires another person. So for that, you either have to make some friends who speak English or you might want to talk to a teacher or take a class because then you can get regular practice with having real conversations because that's what most English students want to be able to do. They want to be able to have real conversations. So that's what you've got to practice. All right. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. I know it's maybe not the simplest answer. <laughs> maybe it wasn't the answer you're hoping for, but that's the most honest answer that I can give you. Okay, Natalia? And if you have more questions, definitely ask. That's fine. 
All right, Luis, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Luis, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Cesar, what time will we have free class tomorrow? Cesar, first of all, I'm going to tell you all the information is in events. All of the information is in events. Now, the reason why I won't tell you what time it is is because you're in a different place than I am. I don't know what time it, the class is in your country. I only know what time the class happens here in my country. So that's why I want you guys to look at events. I want to make sure you have the right time so that you don't miss the class. But if I tell you a certain time and it's different where you live, well, then you might miss the class. I don't want you to miss the class, okay? So Cesar, you're going to check events to see the time for tomorrow's class, okay? All right, guys. So before we go, I have one last thing that we're going to do, okay? First of all, thank you for the thumbs up, guys. If you appreciated this class, if it helped you at all, even a little bit, please give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It helps other students to find me. Now, the last thing that I would like to do before we go is I would like everyone here to tell me what they are going to do after class is done. What are you going to do after class is done? Because class is done in, in like two minutes. What are you going to do when class is done? I'm going to have dinner. Now, it's actually really late where I live. It's, it's 930 now, but I'm going to have dinner after class. What are you going to do after class? I want to know. Let me see something in the comments. What are you guys going to do after this class is over? Because it's almost done. What are you going to do after this class is done? Type something in really quickly. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be detailed. But just give me an idea. What are you guys going to do after this class is done? Natalia, you're welcome. Lizeth, thank you so much. I appreciate the compliment. And you're welcome. Okay? Um, Cesar, where are you? Which state? Good question. I So I'm in the United States, and I live in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut. I'm originally from New York, and now I live in Connecticut. So I want to know, what are you guys going to do after class? Natalia is going to sleep. Natalia, that's a good plan. After I have dinner, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, let's see. What else are you guys going to do? Ruben, I'm going to go work out. Ruben, I'm impressed. I should go work out, but guess what? It's not going to happen tonight. It's too late, and I still haven't had dinner. That's more important. But I'm happy that you're going to go work out. I'll probably do that tomorrow. Let's see. What else are people What else are people going to do? Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Cesar, you're very welcome. And thank you so much for coming to class. Luis, I'm going to continue studying, but not English. <laughs> okay. Good job, Luis. What are you going to be studying? Tell me. I want to know. I'm a curious person. I like to know things. What are you going to be studying, Luis? Tell me. Ramundo, I'm at work. <laughs> I knew someone was watching this class from work. Every time I teach this class, somebody is at work watching this class. Ramundo, be careful. Don't get in trouble, okay? Thank you for coming to class, but don't get in trouble at work, okay? Lizeth, I'm going to do my homework. Ah, you have homework to do. Lizeth, good luck with that. I hope it doesn't take too long. Any other comments? Anything else? We're almost done, guys. All right, it looks like it might be it, okay? So before we go, oh, Luis, aviation topics. Very nice, Luis. I bet you that's why you're studying English because if you wanna be a pilot, you have to be able to speak English. Is that right, Luis? I know other pilots who are learning English for exactly that reason. I've always found that interesting that pilots have to be able to speak English. English is the language that they use to control planes all over the world. So no matter where you're from, if you want to fly planes, you have to speak English. Very interesting. All right, Jose. Oh, hello, Jose. I didn't even see you before. All right, so guys, this is the end of our class. I just want to take a minute to 
thank you guys for coming to class today. I really appreciate you guys being here and participating in class. That really makes these classes awesome, all right? Now remember, there are other free classes. There's one tomorrow. There will be free classes next week. So keep looking out for them so that you don't miss any. If you have any other English questions, you can always come to the Facebook page and you can send me a message from the Facebook page. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys have, all right? Remember to look for my comment. It has all the links with all the information that you might need. And that's it for today, guys. Have a good day or have a good night. It's time for me to have my dinner. And Lizeth, your class, oh, are my classes every day? So free classes are not every day. You have to check events to see what days the free classes are happening, okay? And it changes from week to week because I want to make sure people from different countries can come to my class. So I change the times. So you have to check events to know when the classes are. All right, Lizeth? Luis, it's important, yeah, it's important to speak English. It's important to speak English. In that sentence, we would use the word speak, okay? But yes, you're right. For a lot of things, it's important to speak English. Now, why that is, why they picked English, I don't know, but it's true. All right, guys, have a good day or have a good night. It's time for my dinner. Bye, guys. <laughs>